Hey everyone, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and welcome to this video review of the 2020 Canyon Lux. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about what kind of bike the Lux is and where it sits in the Canyon mountain bike lineup. I'm gonna go into some detail about the specific bike that I've been testing here for the last couple of months. We're gonna talk about how it rides on the trail, what it does well, what it struggles with, and how it compares to the competition. Now, if this is your first time joining us on YouTube, consider subscribing to our channel for plenty more videos coming your way in the near future. So what kind of bike is the Lux? Well, this is a short travel cross country race bike. In the Canyon lineup, this sits in between the Exceed Hardtail and the Neuron 130mm travel trail bike. In comparison, the Lux has just 100 millimeters of travel on the back, and it comes with either a 100 or 110 millimeter travel fork. Being a cross country race bike, it is of course made from carbon fiber. And compared to the previous Lux, Canyon's engineers have been able to shave off over 250 grams off the frame. Now the frame weight for the new Lux SLX frame is just under two kilos, including the rear shock, which is pretty impressive. It's worth mentioning here that there are actually two Lux frames. There's the higher end SLX frame, and there's a slightly cheaper SL frame. They both have exactly the same shape, same geometry, same suspension design. The SL frame uses a slightly lower grade of carbon fiber, and as a result, it's a bit heavier, about 190 grams heavier than the SLX frame. With the new Lux, Canyon has changed the suspension layout. So the rear shock now sits up underneath the top tube, and that's created a load more space inside the mainframe. In fact, Canyon says you can fit two full-size water bottles on every single frame size, including the small, which is pretty impressive. Not many frames on the market can do that. The Specialized Epic, Orbea Oith, and the Trek Supercaliber are three notable exceptions. The Lux uses a really nice compact linkage here. We've got a very small alloy link which connects the carbon seat stays to the seat tube, and then a composite yoke which then connects the seat stays to the lower end of the rear shock. It's very compact, gives it a really nice clean look. Despite this being a lightweight race-oriented bike, Canyon hasn't forgotten the practicalities on the Lux though. I really like the IPU headset design, which is basically there to stop the handlebars from over-rotating in the event of a crash, thereby stopping the shifter from crashing into the top tube. There's also the Quixel rear through axle, which I love. It gives tool-free practicality, and when you don't need it, you simply slide it and pop it back in place. It gives it a very clean and narrow back end. There's also clearance for up to a 2.3 inch tire in the back of the Lux, and the frame comes with a 30.9 millimeter diameter seat tube. Now, all of the Lux models, bar the cheapest version, come with an internally routed dropper post, which I think is a fantastic addition to a cross-country bike. Speaking of models, there are no fewer than seven Canyon Lux models for 2020. The three highest end models use the SLX carbon frame and feature a 100 mil travel fork and Maxxis Aspen tires front and rear. The four cheapest models use the slightly heavier SL carbon frame. They also come with a 110 millimeter travel fork and a more reasonable Maxxis Recon tire on the front. The bike that I've got here is the Lux CFSL 8.0 and it sits smack bang in the middle of the range. This bike goes for $6,599. It comes with a SRAM X01 Eagle drivetrain. We've got a RockShox suspension package, level brakes and Reynolds carbon wheels. Now at 175 centimeters tall, I'm riding the medium size in the Lux. According to Canyon's online size configurator though, I should be riding a small. Now this bike isn't particularly long, the reach is 430 millimeters on the medium, so there's no way that I downsize to a small frame. Now I've ridden a few Canyon mountain bikes over the last couple of years, and my advice to anyone out there who's sort of on the borderline between two frame sizes, always go for the bigger size if you can, because they're not always the longest bikes out there. Now that fairly compact cockpit is combined with an 80 millimeter long stem and the narrowest handlebars I've ridden in some time. Now I was initially skeptical, but I actually got used to the 720 millimeter bars quite quickly and I grew to really like them as well. They're absolutely fantastic on old school hand cut single track where the trees haven't gotten 
any wider apart, they're still the same distance apart. So those narrow bars really help you to kind of duck and weave your way through tight, twisty single track. The narrow bars also create a really powerful and efficient climbing position, something that I'll talk about in just a moment. As for the rest of the setup on this bike, I put 24 PSI in the front tire and 27 PSI in the rear tire. I weigh 68 kilos, so for the RockShox fork, I put 100 PSI in the air spring got me to about 25% sag while standing on the pedals, and I set the rebound at eight clicks off the slowest setting. As for the rear shock, this is a really big size shock for a bike with just 100 mil travel. It's got a 55 millimeter stroke, and that means the average leverage ratio is quite low. Combined with the big debonair can on this RockShox Deluxe shock, it means the operating pressures are quite low. So to get 20% sag on the rear shock, I was running 110 PSI. Now that gave a really good, firm, efficient feel for cross country racing but I did drop that pressure down to 100 PSI, which increased the sag to 25%, gave the rear suspension a slightly smoother and more supple feel, and it's what I'd also recommend for longer distance marathon racing, where you want a little bit more comfort out of the back end. All up, out of the box, this bike weighs 11.37 kilograms, so it's pretty light for a bike at this price point. Combined with its firm, efficient suspension design, this is a bike that doesn't hang around. It is very fast, it accelerates really well. It's got a really powerful, firm feeling under pedaling. Compared to some other bikes on the market like the Scott Spark, Giant Anthem and the Santa Cruz Blur, the Lux is more naturally efficient, even with the suspension completely unlocked. It's not super smooth, and this is something you'll notice at lower speeds where you'll get more feedback coming up from the rear wheel. But as the speed increases, the suspension becomes more responsive and more reactive. Compared to the previous Lux, the new model has more progression built into the suspension curve, so it's got better mid-stroke support and it's less likely to bottom out as well. And that means it's got really good support on medium to large size hits, and it just gets better the faster you go. Definitely not the smoothest at lower speeds, but once you're really revving along at race pace, the rear suspension is very active and very effective as well. The responsive rear suspension design is kind of echoed in the handling of this bike as well. It's very, very responsive. The angles are pretty sharp, whereas some XC bikes on the market are getting slacker and longer with longer wheelbases. Canyon's kept it pretty classic with the Lux. So we've got a 69.5 degree head angle and a 74 degree seat angle. The back end is pretty short too. Compared to the previous Lux, Canyon's shave 15 millimeters off the rear center length. So we've got a 435 millimeter long chain stays on the back of the Lux. And combined with the sharp head angle and the reasonably short cockpit, the wheelbase is pretty tight. And that means in tight, twisty single track, this bike is super agile. It slices and dices single track very efficiently, very effectively. The steering is about as responsive as it gets, so you really need to pay attention riding this bike. But as long as you're on it and you're riding with conviction, this bike is deadly efficient and very responsive on that tight, twisty single track. As to what this bike struggles with, well, it probably comes as no surprise that the steeper and rougher the descent, the less confidence-inspiring the Lux is. That's partly because of the short cockpit and those narrow handlebars. There's just less to hold on to when shit starts getting a bit wild. Compared to the Specialized Epic, the Scott Spark, and the Santa Cruz Blur, those three bikes either have a slacker head angle or a reduced offset fork. The Lux is just a little twitchier in the front end, so it doesn't feel as planted when you're going at really high speeds, particularly when you're descending. That said, because the rear suspension is so effective and it doesn't wallow or blow through its travel, you can actually get away with a lot more on this bike than you would think with a bike that has a 69.5 degree head angle and 720 millimeter wide handlebars. Perhaps not helping the situation, the SID fork is okay, but it's not as plush and active as a Fox 32. I was able to coax a little bit more activity out of it by adding a bottomless token to the air spring, and that allowed me to drop the air pressure by five PSI to get a little bit more responsiveness around the sag point. Uh, and it did make the fork feel a little plusher overall. If there are any RockShox, Sid, or Reba owners out there that are finding their fork is, feels a little bit firm and perhaps is blowing through its travel, have a look at adding some bottomless tokens to the air spring because it will help the activity of the fork. Speaking of the suspension, I'm not a big fan of the dual remote lockout on this bike. You've got one lever activating both the rear shock and the fork lockout at the same time. Even with brand new cables, the lever feels really stiff. It's quite hard to actuate. 
And partway through the test period, I actually unhooked the lockout cable from the fork so that the lever was only activating the shock. And that instantly improved the action, it was much lighter and easier to use, and as a result, I used it a lot more often. I actually found that this was a better thing for climbing too. With the rear shock locked out and the fork still open, the fork sags a little bit and that helps to steepen the angles a little bit, push your weight a little bit over the front wheel. And I found that to provide a better climbing position. And the fact that this bike has quite thin carbon seat stays and a reasonably high volume rear tire, it means you still get a reasonable amount of comfort out of it even with the rear shock locked out. As for other highlights on this bike, the Reynolds wheels deserve a mention. These are nice and lightweight. They're about 1600 grams for the pair. They have carbon fiber rims with a 24 millimeter internal rim width, which is spot on for cross country race tires around 2.1 to 2.2 inches wide. They're nice and responsive, so they really complement the Lux's handling, but they're not so stiff to shake your teeth out like some other carbon cross country wheels can. The SRAM X01 Eagle drivetrain was flawless throughout testing. The carbon cranks look fantastic and they're also quite lightweight. And I had not a peep out of the press fit bottom bracket, which was silent all the way through testing. One thing I didn't like was the Cell Italia saddle, which lasted one ride before I ripped it off and put on one of my favorite saddles at the moment, the Ergon SM Pro. Uh, I don't normally mention saddles because they're very much personal preference, but Canyon being a direct consumer brand basically means that the bike that you see on their website is the bike that will turn up at your door. So if there's anything on the bike that you don't like, tires, saddle, handlebars, whatever, you're gonna have to fork out your own money to change those over. Speaking of changing parts, I did try out a different set of tires on this bike. The Aspen rear tire is very, very lightweight at about 660 grams, but it leaves a lot to be desired in terms of traction and also stability too. I put on a Pirelli tire combo, a 2.2 inch Scorpion M on the front and a 2.2 inch Scorpion R on the rear. Slightly heavier than the Maxxis tires, but definitely more stable with a really nice, well damped ride quality. Those tires are quickly becoming my go-to for cross country racing and fast trail riding. Riding. I also had the opportunity to try a different fork on the front of the Lux. And the reason I wanted to do this is because every Lux model that comes with a RockShox fork has a 51 millimeter offset. Every model that comes with a Fox fork has a 44 millimeter offset. In speaking with Canyon, the reason for this purely comes down to availability. At the time of ordering, RockShox was only offering a 51 millimeter offset. However, for future models from 2021 and beyond, Canyon will be specking a short offset fork on all of the Lux models. To test out the shorter offset, I put in a Fox 32 step cast fork with 100 millimeters of travel. Because it was a little bit shorter in travel, it does steepen the angles a touch. So it steepens the head angle to 70 degrees and the seat angle to 74.5 degrees. It also drops the bottom bracket height by four millimeters. So the whole bike gets a little bit lower to the ground. Despite the shorter travel fork, I did find the Fox fork provided a more stable feel to the front of the Lux. I was able to descend faster and with more confidence purely because of that short fork offset, which provides more trail on the front of the bike. That gives more damping to the steering and calms the front of the Lux down. The downside to the short fork offset is the steering is a touch slower on tighter and twistier trails, particularly if you're riding on the flats or you're climbing. It was something I noticed on uphill switchbacks where the Lux required a little bit more muscle to get around those really tight 180 degree switchbacks. Personally though, I think the trade-off is worth it for the added stability and confidence that you get on the descents. Those handling nuances aside, I think the Lux has to be one of the best all-round packages going as far as cross-country bikes go. Compared to the competition, I'd say it's more practical than the Specialized Epic, which has a fully proprietary suspension design. It's a little bit more efficient and more agile than the Scott Spark, and it also has room for two water bottles inside the mainframe as well, which is an important consideration for long distance cross country riders and marathon racers. Compared to the Giant Anthem, the Lux isn't quite as plush in its rear suspension design, but it is more naturally efficient and it's also more responsive and more agile as well. Two other bikes that I'd like to compare the Lux to are the new Orbea Oith and the Trek Supercalibre. And those are bikes we'll be getting in for testing soon. So stay tuned to flowmountainbike.com for more on those two. Otherwise, I've been really impressed with the Canyon Lux. This bike is lightweight, efficient, fast, and responsive, but it's still practical as well. And Canyon's really thought about the finer details on this bike, which are really gonna to appeal to cross-country racing privateers.
Now, if you'd like to read the full review on the Canyon Lux, make sure you go to flowmountainbike.com. If you've got any questions for me about the Lux, make sure you drop them into the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for plenty more video reviews coming your way soon. Otherwise, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Toodaloo.